Shalom. Give it all praise, honor, and infinite glory unto the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakach, Wadash. Double honors unto the head apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, who do rule well and teach well. Shalom unto the elders and the elder bishops of Great Millstone as well. Shalom, Shalom. Peace, love, salutations, and blessings unto the hopeful elect in the heart of Shalom, to the sincere brethren laboring across the four winds of the earth, given diligence to make their calling and election sure. Shalom, Shalom. So this lesson is inspired through the Spirit by reading the book of Jude, uh, which is one chapter long, the fifth verse. And Jude, just a little background, he's the biological brother of our Lord Yahweh Shai. Yahweh Shai had two brothers who believed, James and Jude, who are both apostles, and they both have their own books in the scriptures, the book of James and the book of Jude. Jude is also called Judas. And he had two brothers who didn't believe, Simon and Joses. But this... Uh, Scripture, as far as the fifth verse, is the inspiration of the lesson. And Lord's will, I pray this lesson is edifying, comforting, educational, and it reaches the ears of the whole for the elect. This is the book of Jude, the first chapter in the fifth verse. And it reads, I will therefore put you in remembrance, though ye once knew this, how the Lord, Yahweh Shai, Lord with a capital L, lowercase O-R-D, is actually Yahweh Shai. How that the Lord Yahweh Shai, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, the Israelites, afterward destroyed them that believe not. And the inspiration for this lesson is when I was reading the NLT, <clears throat> it actually says Yahweh Shai's name. Going into Yahweh Shai, he comes in the volume of the book. Let's just go get that real quick. Luke 20. Let's start with Psalms. And this is going to be like a milk style lesson. Um, just going into Yahweh Shai, coming in the volume of the book. He's in the law, which is the first five books of Moses. <clears throat> you know, the first five books of the Bible, which is called the law of Moses. You know, Genesis, Exodus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, and Leviticus. The first five books of the Bible. He's also in the prophets, you know, Zechariah, Daniel, Nehemiah, and he's also in the Psalms. He's also in the Apocrypha as well. He comes in the volume of the book. He is the word of the Heavenly Father. Psalms 40 and 7, and it reads, Then said I, lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me, because Yahweh Shai, he's the author and finisher of our faith. Let's just go get that. This is Hebrews 12 and 2. And it reads, Looking unto Yahweh Shai, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, because it's through Yahweh Shai's sacrifice that we have this understanding, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of the Heavenly Father, patiently waiting to redeem the elect. This is Luke 24 and 44 this is Luke 24 and 44 then he said unto them these are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you that all things must be fulfilled this is right after he was crucified and he came and appeared to his disciples Luke 24 and 50 Luke 24 and 44 444 4, 4, which is what we're all striving for mercy I don't write this out. This is Luke 24 and 44. And he said unto them, These are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled which are written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. Yahweh Shai comes in the volume of the book, also in the Apocrypha, which is an original part of the Old Testament, which is taken out of the book, out of the, out of the role, by the Bible Destruction Group in the, in the early 1800s. The Apocrypha was originally in the King James Bible. It's canon. Luke 24 and 45. Then opened he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. And the Heavenly Father, through his only begotten Son, has opened up our understanding. And Yahweh Shai comes in the volume of the book. It was Yahweh Shai who was the one that closed the doors on the ark. He was the one that was the death angel that came to visit ancient Egypt, that plagued Egypt. 
that sent the plagues, and it was Yahweh Shai that destroyed those wicked jakes who are coming against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. And those same wicked jakes are coming back, coming against the prophets all over again, to be destroyed all over again. This is Jude 1 and 5, and it reads, Jude 1 and 5, let's get the NLT. <clears throat> And the NLT, for anybody who's new, uh, is the New Living Translation. And it reads, Jude 1 and 5, and it reads, So I want to remind you, though you already know these things, that Yahweh Shai first rescued, first rescued, I'll start again from the top. So I want to remind you, though you already know these things, that Yahweh Shai first rescued the nation of Israel from Egypt. But later, he destroyed those who did not remain faithful. Where? In the wilderness. Let's just go get that. But for anybody who um, may not understand or may be new or is still clinging on to Christianity, Yahweh Shai, he's spoken about throughout the whole role. It was Yahweh Shai who was in that chariot. You know, he was the pillar of fire by night, the cloud by day. He was the one that came with two angels to visit Abraham, to tell Abraham and Sarah that they were going to conceive a son and he was going to come back to them. We're going to go, a few, we're going to go get a few of those accounts as well. But Yahweh Shai, he's the man and he's coming back to redeem us, man. Now let's go to 1 Corinthians 10. 1 Corinthians 10. And I say he's coming back to redeem us. Lord's will we be of that number. You know. Now let's go 1 Corinthians 10. <clears throat> yep. Get the KJV. This is First Corinthians ten and nine, and it reads, "Neither let us tempt Hamashiach Yahushai, as some of them also tempted, and were destroyed of serpents." In the Book of Numbers, it talks about how Israel was murmuring against Moses, how they were murmuring against, you know, Aaron, wanting to go back to Egypt. You know, wanting to go back to Egypt, not only for the food, but they wanted to go back to Egypt because they wanted to go back to Egypt and be wicked, man. As well as the food. They missed ancient Egypt. Ultimately, they weren't believers. First Corinthians 10 and 10. Neither murmur ye, as some of them also murmured and were destroyed of the destroyer and were destroyed of the destroyer that's talking about the death angel which is our lord yahweh shai matter of fact wisdom of solomon get that on deck <clears throat> wisdom of solomon 18 and <clears throat> yep wisdom of solomon 18 and 13 and it reads what for whereas they would not believe anything by the reason of the enchantments upon the destruction of the firstborn. This is talking about ancient Egypt and how Yahweh Shai came to destroy all the firstborn in Egypt. All the firstborn in Egypt of the Egyptians. Upon the destruction of the firstborn, and that was the firstborn of the cattle, the firstborn of the children, the dogs, everything. For whereas they would not believe anything by the reason of the enchantments upon the destruction of the firstborn, they acknowledge this people to be the sons of the living power. For while all things were in quiet silence, that night, and that night was in the midst of the swift horse, thine almighty word, thine almighty word, who's the word? Yahweh Shai, thine almighty word. Leap down from heaven out of thy royal throne as your 
fierce man of war into the midst of the land of destruction and brought thine unfeigned commandment as a sharp sword and standing up filled all things with death. And that's how he's going to come back and visit the modern day Egypt. And standing up filled all things with death and touched the heaven, but it stood, but it stood upon the earth. The point is right here. Wisdom of Solomon 18 and 15. Thine almighty word lead down from heaven out of thy royal throne. Because we just read he sits down at the right hand of the heavenly father. As a fierce man of war, the lords of men of war, into the midst of the land of destruction. Let's go to Revelation 19. Revelation 19. Revelation 19. <clears throat> yep. Revelation 19. And 11 and I saw heaven open and I saw heaven open oh hold up wow it's all good this is a uh, slacky don't want to get carried away uh, Revelation 19 11 and it reads and I saw heaven open and behold a white horse and he that sat upon him was called faithful and true and white is symbolic of purity and horse is symbolic of a power a pure power that's talking about our Lord Yahweh Shai and I saw heaven open and behold a white horse and he that sat upon him was called faithful and true and in righteousness he doth judge and make war his eyes were as a flame of fire and on his head were many crowns and he had a name written that's going into a rank yet a name written that no man knew but he himself because he's the only one that has that rank of the top angel of the heavenly father on the right hand side he's the chief uh, he's the captain of the host you know he's the chief as well you know Ra'ash the head of the nation of Israel the head Israelite the chief Israelite Revelation 13 and 13 and he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood and his name is called the word of the heavenly father but wait there's more and the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses clothed in fine linen white and clean and out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword that he should smite the nations that's exactly what's going to happen when he returns and he shall rule them with a rod of iron and he treaded the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of the almighty power so it just confirms that he's a man of war he's the captain of the host the armies of heaven follow him he's the word of the heavenly father and also <clears throat> you know he's coming back to take down all power rule and authority man that's what the the many crowns are on his head you know symbolic of all the power and rulership that he's going to take down when he returns now let's go back 1 Corinthians 10, just wanted to prove that point. 1 Corinthians 10 and 9, and it reads, Neither let us tempt Hamashiach, as some of them also tempted and were destroyed as serpents, Numbers in the book of Numbers. Neither murmur ye, as some of them also murmured and were destroyed of the destroyer. And that destroyer is talking about our Lord Yahweh Shai. Let's see what it says in the NLT. 1 Corinthians 10 and 10, wow. Don't grumble as some of them did, and they were destroyed by the angel of death. By the angel of death. And that angel of death is our Lord Yahweh Shai. Because he's also called what? The first begotten of the dead. Revelation 1 and 6. Oh, it might be 1 and 4. Bear, bear with me. Bear with me. Bear with me. This is Revelation 1 and 5. And from Hamashiach Yahweh Shai, who was the faithful witness. And the first begotten of the dead. Because he's conquered death. And the prince of the kings on the earth. Unto him that loved us. And washed us from our sins. And his own blood. That's how we got this word man. You know. He laid down his life for his friends. You know. <clears throat> this is uh, John 16 to 33. Just want to. 
hit the precept while it's hot. This is John 16 to 33. But these things I have spoken unto you that ye might have peace. In the world, you should have tribulation. Be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. And he's also overcome death. I think that's Matthew 16 and 20. Bear with me. may not be written that way bear with me yeah yep now uh, first corinthians 15 and 26 and the last enemy that shall be destroyed is death yeah because he's already conquered death but let's not get carried away now what did we just read let's go back to jude jude 1 which is jude which is only one chapter but yet uh, Jude 1 and 5 and it reads I would therefore put you in remembrance though ye once knew this how the Lord Yahweh Shai having saved the people out of the land of Egypt afterward destroyed them that believed not we just read about it in the book of Corinthians now let's get the NLT because I want to I want to I want to get this first Corinthians uh, we're just in first Corinthians uh, Jude 1 and 5 the NLT so I want to remind you Though you already know these things, because what does the scripture say? The Lord will store up our pure minds by way of remembrance, by what us hearing this word. And once we hear this word, we'll be reactivated. You know, let's just go get that. Sirach 25, Sirach 27, and 8, and it reads, Sirach 27 and 8, if thou followest righteousness, Thou shalt obtain her and put her on as a glorious long robe. That's talking about wisdom. And that glorious long robe is the garment, which is this understanding. Same thing. The birds will resort unto their like. So will truth return unto them that practice inner. Because that word educate goes back to the word edicari, which means to draw out. Because this truth was already in us. It just needed to be reactivated by men preaching the word because the scriptures say uh, I want to get carried away but want to hit points while they're hot John 6 and 63 John 6 and 63 and it reads the spirit alone uh, John 6 and 63 and it reads the spirit that quickeneth is the spirit that quickeneth the flesh profiteth nothing the words that I speak unto you they are spirit and they are life and that word <clears throat> the word quickeneth goes into basically I'll just get it right here Strong's G 2227 Zoa Poi Yep Zoa Poi It goes to, to cause to live to make alive give life to restore to life but if you go into the uh, Old Testament definition it'll it'll go into basically to bring back to bring back alive you know because we were spiritual we were spiritually dead you know before we heard this word by spiritual power to arouse or invigorate revitalize yep revitalize right there basically goes into reviving you man you know give strength or energy to animate you get the point now let's go back Jude 1 and 5 and it reads so I want to remind you that you already though you already know these things that Yahweh Shai first rescued the nation of Israel from Egypt but later he destroyed those who did not remain faithful in the wilderness we just read about it but let's go into the first part of it Jude 1 and 5, so I, to, so I want to remind you, though you already know these things, that Yahweh Shai first rescued the nation of Israel from Egypt. Because Yahweh Shai, he was in the chariot. Exodus 13. We'll start here. Exodus 13. Exodus 13. 
Testeo-me. <clears throat> this is a good one right here. This is a good definition. Uh, a good translation, better yet. I don't want to make this too long. 20 minutes. Okay, we're doing good. This is the Exodus. The volume's still on. This is Exodus, the 13th chapter, in the 20th verse. I'll get the KJV next. And it reads, The Israelites left Sukkoth and camped in Etham on the edge of the wilderness. The Lord, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, went ahead of them. He guided them during the day with a pillar of cloud, and he provided light at night with a pillar of fire. This allowed them to travel by day or by night. And the Lord Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai did not remove the pillar of cloud or the pillar of fire from its place in front of the people. Now, who was in that pillar of fire? Let's go to Exodus 13 in the KJV. We'll get uh, Exodus 14 next. And it reads, And they took their journey from Succoth, and it camped in Etham in the edge of the wilderness. And the Lord Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shai, went before them in a and went before them by day in a pillar of cloud and led them the way and led them the way and by night in a pillar of fire and gave them light Whoo! to go by day and night i just i gotta get both of them while they're hot this is psalms 119 and 104 psalms 119 and 104 and it reads through thy precepts i get understanding therefore i hate every false way and through the precepts we get understanding the scriptures say precept upon precept line upon line here a little there a little that's how you learn the scriptures psalms 119 and 105 is the point thy word is a lamp unto my feet thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path and that's what this word does it navigates us, you know, through the spirit and power of Yahweh how to move, how to operate within the body and outside the body as far as just your everyday life. You know, thy word is a lamp unto my feet. And who's the, what's the word? Our Lord Yahweh Shai. You know, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Let's get Exodus 23 and 20. And it reads, Exodus 23 and 20, and it reads, Behold, I send an angel before thee to keep thee in the way and to bring thee into the place which I prepare. Beware of him and obey his voice. Provoke him not, for he would not pardon your transgressions, for my name is in him. And that's a lot right there. That angel with the capital A is talking about our Lord Yahweh Shai. Because, we'll just go get it, John 14 and 6, and it reads, John 14 and 6, Yahweh Shai saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me, and no man can come unto the Son except through the Father. You know, there's a perfect system of checks and balances. Yep. <clears throat> John 14 and 6, Yahweh Shai saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Because he's the door. You know? <clears throat> yep. Beware of him. Obey his voice. Provoke him not. His voice is the holy prophets who he sends with his word. He that despises you despises me. And he that despises me despises him that sent me. Luke 10 and 16. Provoke him not, for he would not pardon your transgressions, for my name is in him. And he's the only angel that has the ability and power to pardon your transgressions. And that word name goes back to his authority, because the Heavenly Father's only begotten Son is an extension, his right hand, his, his holy arm. You know, Yahweh Shai is an extension of the Heavenly Father's authority, because the scriptures say the the Father judgeth no man, but has committed all judgment unto Yahweh Shai. But the point is, I sent an angel before thee to keep thee in the way. Let's go back to Exodus. Exodus 13. And the Lord, yep, went before them 
by day and a pillar of a cloud to lead them the way. Behold, I send an angel before thee to keep thee in the way. And by night in a pillar of fire to give them light. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and the light unto my path, roughly paraphrasing, to go by day and night. He took not away the pillar of the cloud by day, nor the pillar of fire by night from before them. Now let's go to Exodus 14 and 13. Exodus 14, and it says, The sea is divided. Yep. And Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord, Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shai. And that's what Yahweh Shai's name means, salvation. Let's get this word salvation. The word salvation in the Hebrew is Yashawa I, Yashawa I, Yashawa, Yashawa I, Yashawa I, and it, you just need a ha right there, but it's Yashawa I, Yashawa Aya, Yashawa Aya, and it goes into, and the, the short is Yashai, but some good definitions right here if you look it up. It goes into salvation, deliverance. Salvation by the Most High, victory. And that's what his name means, you know, salvation, Yahweh Shai. Deliverance, and that's who's going to come back and give us the deliverance. Hence, aid, he's giving us aid right now, this word's going out. I'm, I'm being comforted doing this lesson. Victory, prosperity, deliverance, health, going into him restoring us, you know, help, bing, salvation, saving, welfare. Yep, let's go back. Exodus 14 and 13, and Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord Yahweh, which he will show you today. For the Egyptians whom ye have seen today, Ye shall see them again no more forever. And that's beautiful because the modern day Egyptians, they're going to be taken out of power the same way and they're never, going to, they're never going to be in power anymore. You know, for there was a war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon and his angels and their name was not found in heaven anymore as far as in rulership or in authority or power because the Lord's coming back to take down all power, rule, and authority. Exodus 14 and 14 and it reads, the Lord Yahweh shall fight for you and ye shall hold your peace. You shall hold your peace because the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. The Lord says he's going to come through, man. He's going to come through, man. We believe. Exodus 14 and 15. And the Lord Yahweh Shai said unto Moses, Wherefore Christ thou unto me, speak unto the children of Israel that they go forward. But lift, but lift thou up thy rod and stretch out thine hand over the sea and divide it and the children of Israel shall go on dry ground through the midst of the sea. And the enemy shall come in like a flood, man. <sighs> you know? Because the modern day Egyptians, they're going to come in like a flood. You know? But what? The elect, they're going to walk on dry ground, man. Exodus 14 and 17. And I behold, and I behold, and I behold, I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians and they shall follow them and I will get me honor upon Pharaoh and upon all his hosts, upon his chariots and upon his horsemen in the Egyptians. The points are 19, but I'm reading down in the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord. And this is when the Lord's name was magnified through all the throughout all the earth. This is how his name became famous, you know. And in the Egyptians shall know that I am Yahweh Shai when I have gotten me honor upon Pharaoh upon his chariots and upon his horsemen and the angel and the angel of the Most High and the angel of the Heavenly Father the angel of the Lord which went before the camp of Israel removed and went behind them and the pillar of the cloud went before went from before their face and stood behind them so that's the same angel that's being talked about in Exodus 23 and 20 that angel is Yahweh Shai, man. You know? He was the one that appeared in the burning bush in the book of Exodus, the third chapter. He was the one that closed uh, 
the, the, the doors and the ark. Genesis, I think it's about 10 and 16. Let's just go get it. Oh no, it's uh it's back at no seven. Genesis seven. Bear bear with me. We'll just get both of them. Genesis seven and sixteen. I'll probably get a few more wrap on up. This is Genesis seven and sixteen. And it reads <clears throat> Hold up. Yep. Yep, this is, uh, I'll start with 15. And they went into the ark, and they went in unto Noah, they, and they went in unto Noah into the ark, two and two of all flesh, wherein is the breath of life. And they went in, male and female of all flesh, as the heavenly father had commanded him, and Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai shut him in. Now what did the Lord say? He says, John 10 and 9, John 10 and 9, and it reads, I am the door by me. If any man enter in, he shall be saved. And that's ultimately what happened with Noah and his three sons and their wives entered into the ark. Because what did Noah have? Noah had the testimony of our Lord, Yahweh Shai, which is the spirit of prophecy. I am the door by me. If any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. Man. Yeah. This word, man. You know. Now let's go get one more. We'll go back to Jude and probably close on out. We'll just see how the spirit operates. Let's get uh, Genesis 18 because I mentioned it. Let's just prove all things. Genesis 18. And the reason the Lord, Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shai, appeared unto him in the plains of Mamre. And it says the birth of Isaac promised. And he sat at the in the tent door in the heat of the day, talking about Abraham, Abram, who was also called Abraham, you know, Abram, who was called Abraham, who was also called Abram, vice versa. You know, <clears throat> he was later changed. He was name was Abram first. And it was his name was later changed to Abraham, you know. And he lifted up his eyes and looked and lo, three men stood by him. And when he saw them, he ran to meet them at the tent door and bowed himself toward the ground and bowed himself toward the ground. This is how you know it's Yahweh Shai. Because what did the angel on the island of Patmos tell our forefather John? Revelation 19 and 10. And it reads, And I fell at his feet to worship him, and he said unto me, See thou do it not. Why? I am thy fellow servant and of thy brethren that had the testimony of Yahweh Shai. Same thing that Noah had. Because that the name Noah goes back into the word Nawak, which means comfort. Let's prove it. Let's see if let's see if uh Esau's up in this uh blue letter change in definitions. But I got it written down and I got my book of Hebrew right by me. So if I need to, I I can show you in the book of Hebrew. Because I got it. Nawah, yeah, Nawah. All right, yeah, right here. It's the same. It's the that's the work. That's the right one right here. Nawah. I should pull up comfort, resting place. Yeah, resting place, comfort, rest. You know. Yeah, you know Esau don't like to tell the truth. Rest, which means comfort. You know. It's all good. We know. Let's go back. We're, we're getting some. Bear with me. Bear with me. Bear with me. Revelation 19 and 10. Revelation 19 and 10. And it reads, And I fell at his feet to worship him. This is John on the island of Patmos having a dialogue with the angel. And he tried to he tried to bow down and worship the angel. And the angel was like, Don't be doing that, man. I'm your brother, man. Worship the Most High. And I fell at his feet to worship him. And he said unto me, See thou do it not. I am thy fellow servant and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Yahweh Shai. Worship the Most High for the testimony of Yahweh Shai is the spirit of prophecy. And that's what the, that's what the uh, prophet and our forefather Noah had. Because Noah was a prophet. He prophesied for 120 some years of reign. And people weren't believing and people were talking shit, mocking, scoffing. 
and they all died a horrible death, choking on their own blood. Because drowning, that's a horrible way to die. Genesis 18, let's go back. And the Lord Yahweh, Bashimi Haoshai, appeared unto him in the plains of memory, unto Abraham. And he sat in the tent door in the heat of the day. And he lift up his eyes and looked, and lo, three men stood by him. And when he saw them, he ran to meet them from the tent door and bowed himself toward the ground and said, My Lord, if now I have found favor in thy sight, and he bowed himself at the door, yep, pass not away, I pray thee from thy servant. And if you keep on reading down, he fetched a meal, yep, and Abraham hastened in the tent unto Sarah and says, Make a ready three measures of fine meal, knead it, and make cakes upon the hearth. And Abraham ran unto the herd to fetch a calf tender and good and gave it to the young man and he hasted to dress it it points a little down points down a little farther but we're going to read to it yeah let's just let's just read to it and he took butter and milk and the calf which he had dressed and set it before them and he stood by them under the tree and they did eat and they said unto him where is sarah thy wife and he said behold in the tent and he said I was certain and what and he said, I was certainly returned unto thee according to the time of life. This is the Lord Yahweh Shai, letting him know he's gonna come back as Isaac. He's gonna he's gonna come to him as Isaac. Genesis 18 and 10, and he said, I will return, I was certainly returned unto thee according to the time of life, and lo, Sarah thy wife shall have a son. And Sarah heard it in the tent door, which was behind him. Now Abraham and Sarah were old and well stricken in age, about 90, 95, 100 or so. A little under 100, if not. And it ceased to be with Sarah after the manner of woman. Therefore Sarah laughed with her, within herself, saying, After I am wax old, shall I have pleasure? My Lord being old also, like, I can't have kids. We're old as, you know what, man? Genesis 18 and 13, what happened? And the Lord, Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shai, said unto Abraham, Wherefore did Sarah laugh? Why is she laughing, man? No, this is why, because Yahweh Shai is an austere man. He's serious. Serious business, man. You know, he's a warlike power, you know. And the Lord, Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shai, said unto Abraham, because the Lord's a man of war. Yahweh was known to be an austere man. Wherefore did Sarah laugh, saying, Shall I of surety bear a child which am old? Is anything too hard for the Lord? At the time appointed, at the time appointed, I will return unto thee. At the time appointed, I will return unto thee. Not I'm going to send somebody, and you know, you know, I'm going to send somebody else, somebody else going to come back. He says, I return unto thee according to the time of life according to the time of life according to the heavenly father cycle of life reincarnation and sarah shall have a son then sarah denied saying i laugh not for she was afraid for she was afraid she knew that you know this this angel meant business man and he said nay but you did laugh yeah, yeah okay you laughed though and the men rose from thence and looked towards sodom and what? And the men rose up from thence and looked towards Sodom, and Abraham went with them to bring them on the way. And if you read the 19th chapter, eventually uh, two of those angels, they came and appeared unto Lot. And the men in Lot, uh, it's like the men in Sodom, they were so nasty and so defiled and so decrepit, they wanted to try to sleep with those angels, man. You know? And the angels let them know, we're going to. We're going to jack this city up, man. Get up out of here, man. We, we, about to, we about to wreck shop, you know? But I just wanted to sort of cover that. Now let's go and get Jude, and we'll probably get a few more wrap on up. This is Jude continuing. Jude 1. Jude 1. Let's get on. Let's read on. Let's, let's read on down. Yep. Jude 1 and 5. 
I will therefore put you in remembrance, though you once knew this, how that the Lord, Yahweh Shai, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, we just read about it, you know, it was Yahweh Shai who was in that pillar of fire by night in the cloud by day. He was the angel of the Most High who just was sent to keep us in the way. And mind you, this is right after, this is right after the flood. This is right after Sodom and Gomorrah. Jake was still murmuring and talking shit. So the Lord had to come back and destroy all those Jakes in the wilderness who didn't believe. And those same Jakes are coming back doing the same thing all over again. Wanting to stay in the modern day Egypt. You know? And what does the scripture say? Proverbs, let's get a quick precept. Proverbs 17 and 15. And it reads, Proverbs 17 and 15. He that justifieth the wicked and condemneth the just. Even they both are abomination to Yahweh Bashim Shai. And something that's an abomination is something that's worthy of you being stoned for or put to death for. Idolatry, you know, witchcraft, so on and so forth, you know. Jude 1, Jude 1 and 5, and it reads, I would therefore put you in remembrance, though you once knew this, how the Lord, Yahweh Shai, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, the Israelites, out of the Egyptians' hands, afterward destroyed them that believe not. And the angels, which, were, which kept not their first estate, going into Ultimately, the transgression that happened because Adam let his woman lead him and he ate of the wicked philosophies of the nations, which he was not supposed to, but it had to happen for prophecy's sake so we could see that this is not the way, you know. And after that, death was introduced into the world. The sons of God fell, going into the fallen ones, you know, the Napoleon, you know, the giants that's talked about in the book of Genesis, the sixth chapter. Jude 1 and 6 and it reads and the angels which kept not their first estate going into us that word angel goes into the Hebrew word malak or malakim which can be used for a king or a messenger and that's what we are you know a nation of kings and priests because if you go into that word uh, angel it goes into the, the one of the definitions you'll see is a priest and the same word malak can also be used for a king you know and the angels which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, had he hath reserved an everlasting change unto under darkness, these unimmortal bodies, unto the judgment of the great day, even as Sodom and Gomorrah, and the seas round and the seas about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh. And if you read in the book of Genesis the nineteenth chapter, it talks about how those wicked men of Sodom and Gomorrah, they wanted to sleep with those angels. They said, let us know them, man, you know. And going after the strange flesh are set forth an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. Yep, unquenchable fire. Now let's go to, let's get something in Zechariah real quick. Zechariah, the second chapter. Let's get this. Zechariah. And it says the heavenly father's favor to Zion, you know, to Zion one. That's the Hebrew word for Zion, which is a monument, you know, the house, the house of David, you know, Israel start with the house of David because Israel is also called Zion as well. But in certain contexts, it's talking about the elect, you know, when it says Zion to Zion, when the monument, you know, the tabernacle. Memorial, you know, Zechariah two and one, and it reads, I lifted up my eyes again and looked. And behold, a man with a measuring line in his hand, you know, angel. Then said I, whither goest thou? And he said unto me, to measure Jerusalem. And that's what's being played out through this word going out, you know. And he said unto me, to measure Jerusalem, to see what is the breadth thereof and what is the length thereof. And behold, the angel, and behold, the angel that talked with me went forth. That, that's confirming this is an angel. And another angel went out to meet him and he said and said unto him, <clears throat> run, speak to this young man, saying, Jerusalem shall be inhabited as towns without walls for the multitude of men and cattle therein. For I, said the Lord, Yahweh, will be unto her a wall of fire round about and will be the glory in the midst of her. Ho, ho, come forth. 
and flee from the land of the north. It said the Lord Yahweh, for I have spread you abroad as the four winds of heaven, said the Lord Yahweh. That was the point I was looking to get. Let's go to Matthew 24. Matthew 24. Matthew 24. Because as those wicked Israelites who ultimately are going to be destroyed in the modern day Sodom and Gomorrah, modern day Egypt, are being destroyed, you're going to have those who are being gathered together through the word, through our, through our Lord Yahweh Shai and the angels, be delivered. Matthew 24 and 30, and it reads, uh, bear with me, Matthew 24 and 30, and it reads, <clears throat> yeah, it says the glorious return. Matthew 24 and 29, let's start here. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of heavens shall be shaken because the earth is going to reel to and fro like a junker because of all the icy beams that are going to hit this place when the Lord returns. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man, our Lord Yahweh Shai in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him. Revelation 1 and 7. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. He's going to come back as an angelic force, man. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. This is Isaiah 64. Isaiah 64. And it reads, O oh, that thou wouldest pray for mercy and help. And that's what we need, mercy and help. Isaiah 64 and 1. O oh, that thou wouldest rend the heavens, that thou wouldest come down that the mountains might flow down at thy presence. And how is the Lord going to how is the Lord going to come back? Acts 1 and 9. Acts 1 and 9. And it reads, And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight, a chariot, a UFO. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, behold, two men, two, two men, two men, two men, two angels stood by them in white apparel. Which said, which also said, ye men of Galilee, why stand ye up gazing into heaven? This same Yahweh Shai, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. And you notice the common, uh, the common denominator when you always, when, you, when, when we cover some of these passages is two angels because Yahweh Shai is the mercy seat. Psalms 99 and 1. I believe it's 99 and 1. And it reads, yep. Psalms 99 and 1. And it reads, the Lord, Yahweh, Hashem, Yahweh, Shai, reigneth. Let the people tremble. Woo! That's exactly what's going to happen. He sitteth between the cherubims, the angels, man. You know? That the earth, it's like it. The Lord reigneth. Let the people tremble. He sitteth between the cherubims. Let the earth be moved. The Lord is great in Zion. He is high above earth. All the people, and that's how he's going to return in all this splendor and glory, man. You know, but if you go into in the uh, in the Ark of the Covenant, and uh, basically the uh, the the uh, the Holy of Holies, you know, you would have the mercy seat that was between the two cherubims. That was symbolic of Yahweh Shai, you know. Let's go into, we're just getting, yeah, Psalm, uh, Isaiah 64 and 1, and it reads, uh, Oh, that thou wouldest rend the heavens, that thou wouldest come down. Uh, Acts, we got that, okay, yeah. Acts 1 and 10, And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, behold, two men, two men stood by them in white apparel, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, talking to the apostles, why stand ye up gazing into heaven? This same Yahweh Shai, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. What? He ascended, man. Let's go to Proverbs 30. 
Proverbs 30 and 4, and it reads, Who had ascended into heaven or descended? Who had gathered the wind in his fists? Who had bound the waters in a garment? Who had established all the ends of the earth? Because Yahweh Shai, he was there at, at the beginning of creation. He got the blueprint from the Heavenly Father to give to the elect to, you know, create everything. Who had established all the ends of the earth? What is his name and what is his son's name if thou canst tell? And you have, you know, uh, certain bugged out Jake. So I'd like to say that, you know, it was King David, you know, who uh, I think is uh, they'll say King David is the one that is that just being talked about right here. But the scriptures say in the book of Acts, David had not ascended. You know, David didn't ascend. You know, it was Jehovah Shai that did it, man. Let me see. I'll just get it. Let's prove all things. David. Yeah. Just Google it. Um, bear with me. Acts, the second chapter, I believe. Yeah, Acts 2 and 34. Yep. At, at David, yeah, for David is not ascended. The Wadi Yahweh Acts 2 and 34, and he reads, For David is not ascended into the heavens, but he saith himself, The Lord Yahweh Bashimah said unto my Lord, Sit thou on my right hand, that's who the Lord is, at the right hand of the Heavenly Father, until I make thy foes thy footstool. And if you read in Psalms uh, 110, it says, Sit at thy right hand till I make thy enemies thy footstool. You know? <clears throat> So it's uh, Proverbs 30 and 4. It's not talking about King David. It's talking about our Lord Yahweh Shai. You know, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Yep. Let's go back. Isaiah 64 and 1. Oh, that thou wouldest rend the heavens, that thou wouldest come down. Let the mountains, that the mountains might flow down at thy presence. As when the melting fire burneth, the fire causeth the waters to boil. That's exactly what's going to happen to the water that's around Babylon the Great. A good portion of that water that's around Babylon the Great, the Pacific Ocean, the Atlantic Ocean, the Gulf of Mexico, that's going to be bubbling, man. You know? Boiling. As when melting fire burneth, the fire causeth the waters to boil, to make thy name known to thine adversaries that the nations may trouble at thy presence. Man, what a sight that's going to be to see, man. You know? This is uh, Zechariah, Zechariah 2 and 5, and it reads, For I, saith the Lord, Yahweh, I will render unto her a wall of fire round about, and will be the glory in the midst of her. Ho, ho, come forth, flee from the land of the north, saith the Lord, Yahweh, Yahweh, for I have spread you abroad as the four winds of heaven, said the Lord Yahweh, because he scattered us. Deliver thyself, O Zion, that dwellest in the daughter. Deliver thyself, O Zion, that that. It's like it. I'm a little excited. Let me calm down. Zechariah 2 and 7. Deliver thyself, O Zion, that dwellest with the daughter of Babylon. Because that's what America is. You know? America is known as the daughter of Babylon, the virgin daughter of Babylon, Babylon the great, mystery of Babylon. For thus said the Lord Yahweh Bashim Yashai of hosts, after the glory he had sent me into the nations, which spoiled you, for he that toucheth you toucheth the apple of my eye. And you touch the apple of the Heavenly Father's eye, which is his people. He's going to come back in all his splendor and glory to pay you back, man. But he comes in the volume of the book. Let's go to Matthew uh, 24 let's go back here Matthew 24 yep Matthew 24 and 29 uh, I, I, I'll end right here immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken because the earth is going to reel to and fro like a drunkard then shall appear the sign of the son of man Yahweh Shai in heaven and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn for they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven 
with power and, gl and great glory, with power and great glory. And the clouds is the chariots. And he's going to come back in all the splendor and glory, man. And what's going to happen? And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds. We just read, we've been scattered, you know. Zechariah 2, Zechariah 2, Zechariah 2. <clears throat> yep. And six, whole, whole, come forth and flee from the land of the north. Saith the Lord, Yahweh, Shai, flee mentally and spiritually. Ho, ho, come forth from the land of the north, saith the Lord, Yahweh, Shai, for I have spread you abroad as the four winds of the heavens, saith the Lord, Yahweh, Shai, because we've been scattered, you know, but this word is gathering us through the angels, you know, Matthew 24 and 31, and it reads, and he shall send his angels with the great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect for from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. So with that, I'm going to close on out. Uh, Lord's will, you were edified and comforted. And this lesson was educational. Lord's will. With that, I'm going to close on out. And in closing, I'd like to give all praise, honor, and infinite glory unto Yahweh, Bashim, Yahweh, Shai, Bahashem, Rechach, Wadash. Double honors unto the head apostles and the elders of Great Millstone who do rule well and teach well. Shalom unto the elders and the elder bishops of Great Millstone as well. Shalom, shalom. Peace, love, salutations, and blessings unto the hopeful elect and the hearty shalom to the sincere brethren laboring across the four winds of the earth, given diligence to make their calling and election sure. Shalom, shalom. And until next time, next live stream, next camp session, next lesson, shalom, DTA, wa, ba, 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 ba. Soon. Son, son, son. Shalom.